Hello and a warm welcome to a brand new episode of CNBC TV 18 Weekender. On the show today, we've travelled 620 kilometres from Chennai to this small town called Tenkasi in Tamil Nadu. Now, if you're wondering why that name sounds so familiar, it's probably because you've heard of it as SaaS firm Zoho Corp's big technology hub outside of its global headquarters in Chennai. For the longest time, the company's co-founder and CEO, Sridhar Vembu, has spoken at length about building his tech firm on the bedrock of rural India. Today, Zoho has offices in towns like Madurai, Coimbatore, Tirunelveli and Tiruchirappalli. However, in many ways, it's right here in Tenkasi where that story first began. Today, we get to spend a weekend with Sridhar as we also get a ringside view of what it's like to run a tech firm next door to the Western Ghats. So what are you waiting for? Join me for the ride. Vembo, great to have you with us here on CNBC TV 18 Weekender and I must say it is quite the experience to come to your side of town. We've travelled all the way from Chennai to what can only be described as, I don't even think a tier 3 city, but what is truly the heart of rural Tamil Nadu, so to speak. It's a tier 1 village. It's a tier 1 village. <laughs> That's a great way Welcome. of putting it. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. And on Weekender itself, uh, you know, I have to ask you, you have spoken a great length and we've spoken as well on numerous occasions about your vision to actually build a tech company out of a tier 3 town, tier 2 towns, even rural India, so to speak. Is Tenkasi and Zoho taking form and shape here in Tenkasi, your second largest centre, I believe, outside yes. of Chennai. Oh. Oh. Is that an embodiment of this vision that you have so passionately spoken of over the years? Yeah. Now we are at almost approaching a thousand people mark, mm -hmm. 750 and another maybe a couple of hundred will be joining soon in the next few months. Mm -hmm. And we're building a bigger center in Tenkasi, which is about 25 kilometers from here. Mm -hmm. That's in Matalampari. Mm -hmm. We are in a very remote village, I like, that's why I call it tier one village. Right. This is a real proper panchayat here. This is my home and welcome home first. And uh, this is definitely an adventure, right? So mm -hmm. it's a, Big adventure and we have had this office for 11 years now and we are reaching that thousand people mark which tells you that that whole experiment is working right in building software out of here software mm -hmm. products that can compete in the global market mm -hmm. that experiment is working mm -hmm. and it's very interesting to see this because even as we speak you are currently overseeing the continued transition so to speak of moving away from big cities yeah. to small towns a furtherance or an expansion of that hub and spoke model that we keep speaking about so much. Uh, so tell me about the expansion that you have right now. I believe you're moving to newer tier two, tier three towns. What's the expansion plan at Zoho like? So we have now our hubs coming up in Tirunelveli, Taruvai and uh, Madurai, Kapalur. Mm -hmm. And we have one near Palladam in Coimbatore mm -hmm. district. Between Coimbatore and Tirupur, there's a, a hub coming up. It's, it's already has about 150 people working there, mm -hmm. one coming near Tirichi. Mm -hmm. So all these are already, uh, within the next two, three months, they will all be operational. Mm -hmm. And then once those hubs take root, we'll put small small spokes around it. Right. So that's where we are heading in the next uh, right. year or two. And already about 2,000 people are working from these smaller centers. Uh -huh. And the next three to five years, 50% of our headcount will be in these places. Wow. That's the goal, yeah. That brings me to the most pertinent question when it comes to hiring from small towns, I know it's something that you passionately speak about, but when it comes to the talent question, Sridhar, do you feel that what you get here is ready to actually go about becoming, um, you know, a crucial component of the IT workforce? In fact, it's not just we are able to retain the talent, we're able to bring back some of the talent that left. Right. That has started happening. Now see, you are uh, living standards have gone up everywhere. Mm -hmm. The roads are better, at least still the main roads. Mm -hmm. And then the interior, small villages, there's a challenge. But most of the main roads are good now. Mm -hmm. And your amenities are good. Mm -hmm. Fiber optics is everywhere. Mm -hmm. If you go to Tenkasi town, which is about 30 kilometers from here, right. you have shopping malls, 
you have pizza, you have anything, Chinese food, right? You name it. So it's globalization not, coming to rule. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, globalization is coming everywhere. Yeah. You know, I have to ask you, not only do you talk about this whole vision of, you know, bringing tech to rural India, rural Tamil Nadu, you're even expanding in Uttar Pradesh even as we speak, uh, but you also look and walk the talk when it comes to, you know, taking rural India forward. Um, I, when you moved from the US to India and then, you know, made sure that this was your home where you would, of course, find a place and a dwelling, uh, was becoming more rural part of uh, the plan that you embarked on? I know for a fact that even when I meet you in the city, a vesti and shirt is probably part of your everyday wardrobe. Yeah. It is, and I, I like to work from here. It's, it's a good life. I mean, I say, I don't want people thinking somehow rural life is a sacrifice life. Right. It's a good life. It, it is a good life with naturally less consumption, right. naturally less energy use, all of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you have to intentionally consume less, intentionally use less energy. Mm -hmm. And in, you now you get naturally more walk. Mm -hmm and more fresh air, all of that by natural, you know, by right. just being here. Absolutely. So a lot of that is good quality of life, mm -hmm. they say. And you get time to think. I, I, I know. Somehow removing yourself uh, gives you a perspective. Mm -hmm. like I can think calmly about what, how are we going to uh, you know, handle the AI technology or fresh challenges arising from the global like brewing financial Absolutely. crisis, all of this. You sit here, you think calmer, you know, yeah. you don't get carried away. And I'm glad that you have had time to think about all that in Tenkasi because we will of course come to those questions in just a bit. But I have to ask you, what is typically a day like for you here at Tenkasi? It's not exactly, um, it's, not, it's, it's not Zoho's conical building in Chennai where you have the majority of your tech talent sitting and working out of. It's a nice small town, you belong to the place. Uh, what does Sridhar Bembu do on any given weekend here in Tenkasi? Um, my weekends are similar to weekdays, but usually on weekends I don't have very many meetings. Mm -hmm. I try to keep a day or two off of that and I have time to think, I read something mm -hmm. and then I might go to a temple or some temple festival might be. Right. I get invited to a lot of the, the equivalent of the party in the city is like a temple festival here. Right, okay. So that's what I go to. What are some of the books that you're currently catching up and with? I'm reading some, you No, know, there's a book on the body-mind connection. Okay. That how, you know, things like pain, back pain, all of that is coming from the mind and it's actually written by a back surgeon. Okay. So that's the interesting part. Uh -huh. It's a book by Dr. Sarno, mm -hmm. like John Sarno, MD. And he, is a, he was a back surgeon himself. He believes most of the back pain is coming from mind, not right. from the back. Okay. Which is a very shocking thing for a surgeon to say that. Absolutely. And you also, I believe, ride around your electric auto. Um, uh, teaching is something that you took to as well during the lockdown, uh, uh, another passion that you hold so close to your heart. Uh, do you manage to make time for these pastimes I, as well? Definitely, I go around in my auto all the time. Teaching, I don't get to do as much, but I have a, now I try to make a once a week sort of a interaction with the kids. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll talk about some topic that I'm interested in and that they, I believe they should know. Mm -hmm. So we try to do that about once a week, mm -hmm. but not always because I get tied up in meetings, all that. Right. The school is running quite well, now about uh, 150 kids and growing. Mm -hmm. so. So that's something that's keeping you occupied yeah. around the clock. You know, but even as you go about this journey of building tech talent from rural Tamil Nadu or rural India, so to speak, um, what do you think would be some of the key challenges that you would have to contend with at this time and place? Uh, you know, even as we speak, we're in the midst of a global meltdown when it comes to information technology itself. Um, tech isn't doing well. And I'm almost curious how when the talk is about laying off and cutting down redundancies, which is what every founder speaks of these days. Not everyone's calling it a layoff, in fact. We're not hiring that many new right now, mm -hmm. partly because, of course, growth has slowed considerably. Mm -hmm. We're still growing, but growth rates have come down, mm -hmm. like from 30 plus percent to now like 12, 13, 14 percent. That, that's the range now. Still growing, but you know, it's, I, as I say, 10 percent is better than zero percent. Yeah. But it has come a big come down from a 30 percent days, 30, 35 percent days. And I do expect these conditions to continue. I don't believe yes. that uh, we, we are out of the woods mm -hmm. yet and we still have some way to go on this. Mm -hmm. And the global economic situation is still pretty dire in many ways. Mm -hmm. And so, but what I have ensured is that uh, we have said that we will not resort to layoffs. Mm -hmm. We want to take that out of our, mm -hmm. the worry list for our employees. There's so many things to worry about. Mm -hmm. At least we're not going to do a layoff. Mm -hmm. In other words, if they got used to funding their losses with VC money, then VCs get to call the shots. Yes. They'll say, we will no longer fund your losses, cut down your bond rate, mm -hmm. 
or become profitable, mm -hmm. then you have no option because your revenue is not growing that much. Mm -hmm. How do you become profitable? Mm -hmm. You have to cut your cost. Mm -hmm. The biggest cost is people. Right. But we were running a profitable operation. So for us, the question is, do we want to take a reduction in profit? I would gladly reduce my profit rate. I will even go to, you know, if necessary, we'll go to some loss in a downturn. Mm -hmm. See, a, a loss is supposed to be in a deep depth of the downturn. Some company could lose money for a couple of quarters if they had good cash reserves. Mm -hmm. The loss is not supposed to be during the bubble. Mm -hmm. Companies were losing hundreds of millions on a regular course. Mm -hmm. That's not normal. Mm -hmm. That's what really happened. Absolutely. So ours is a profit-making company. Yes. We are willing to suffer through some profit reduction, mm -hmm. maybe even a mild loss at some point, if, if that's what the world awaits. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to. We can always deploy our people to new products we have to do, new projects. Right. So. With that, we'll slip into a really short break. But on the other side, we'll quiz Sridhar Vembu on what he thinks about artificial intelligence investments in this field and what does it hold really for the company itself keep watching cnbc tv 18 weekender welcome back to cnbc tv 18 weekender we're in conversation with sridhar bembu about how he plans on building a tech company from rural india and all that it entails towards the path of success sridhar i have to ask you you were telling me about how there is expectation no doubt given the circumstances that it growth will slow you know in the years that that go by given the circumstances, but you are willing to take that hit as long as it means keeping employees. I remember when I met you in November and we spoke of how much growth would slow. You told me that there were a lot of variables involved and that you know forecasting growth at this point for Zoho would not be possible. Are you in a place where there's a lot more clarity in terms of how revenue growth will slow? You hit the 1 billion mark in revenue last year. What's it like for FY24, we've just, focused, we've just entered the new fiscal, what's it's, it like? It's probably one of the most uncertain environments right now. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not in the economic forecasting business, but I have seen growth slow down steadily over the last year, mm -hmm. and we are still growing. And uh, we see, we have two currents going on with our business first. Well, first is, we are a very diversified, broad-based, you know, geographically as well as product-wise diversified company. Mm -hmm. Like we don't derive a lot of revenue from any one product, or any one geography. Mm -hmm. We are well diversified across the world around many products. Mm -hmm. That gives you a stability in a downturn, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. But we do live in a, this massive earthquake zone called the global economy. Right. So however strong a house you've built, you still you know, have to suffer mm -hmm. some shakes or some rattles or maybe some mm -hmm. fallen cupboard or something in the house, mm -hmm. even if the house itself is sound. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's, that's, that's how I des describe the mm -hmm. whole situation from the economic point of view. Mm -hmm. If that were the only thing, that's, that's, you know, we know we have handled it through downturns, big downturns we have gone through. But there's another dimension now, that whole AI related disruptions where we, I expect software productivity to go up tenfold. Yes. Maybe a hundredfold. Yes. It's like one software engineer could do the work of a hundred eventually. Not immediately, but could be over the next three to five years. Mm -hmm. And the analogy I give is how handloom weavers suddenly confront the power loom, yeah. the air jets, all of that. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, and it's interesting you said that, and I read your tweet as well. It, it is almost trending towards 10x, yeah. uh, but a 100x efficiency could not be very far away. Yeah. That could well mean more products, quicker productization, exactly. which could also affect human resources at yeah. some point. And, and here's how I say it. So when you have 10x productivity in a sector, if revenues grow 10x with it, then employment can be even. Yeah. Because you produce 10x more for per worker, but you also sell 10x more, so the prices are same, and mm -hmm. you can pay the workers all of that, mm -hmm. and you can pay the workers 10x actually with that. But if revenues start not growing at the same rate, mm -hmm. if revenue grew only 3x, mm -hmm. but productivity is 10x, then you have a problem. Right. And keeping with AI itself, you also made a very interesting point recently when you said that it needs to be as open as can get, yeah. and monopolization of AI is a danger that we have to contend exactly. with and vanquish. Um, do you see the risk of monopolization being something as real as it could possibly get it, in India? It is, and, and as a country, we also have such a critical technology as AI, mm -hmm. which is loaded with all manner of implications, mm -hmm. because AI can influence elections through misinformation, AI could spread information, misinformation, all of it. Mm -hmm. So which means that our citizens, our democratic process has to have a say in this. Mm -hmm. It's not merely a matter of you know, just technology here. Public policy gets involved. 
and we already have a great experience with this digital public goods like UPI. Yeah. So UPI is a grand, brilliant success. Everybody acknowledges it. It's a worldwide success. Mm -hmm. It's because non-profit entities like the India Stack, that whole iSpirit, all those organizations worked together with the government to come up with the stack and it took off. Mm -hmm. And the ONDC is another brilliant mm -hmm. experiment that has started now and I believe I wish it grand success. We are participating in it. Mm -hmm. These are all a very different approach to digital public goods than what we find in America or in the West. Mm -hmm. And so we, we definitely have to learn from our own experience here. Mm -hmm. I do believe in AI as a digital public good. Mm -hmm. It can benefit all our citizens. Mm -hmm. But for that, we have to have input from our policies, all of that, to ensure that it benefits all our citizens. It cannot be a rent-seeking monopoly. Right. Like in a way that, for example, operating system used to be, mm -hmm. where one company controlled all the operating system and collects rent. Mm -hmm. We cannot allow that with AI. That's important for our policy makers to realize. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I also have to ask you, given, given the bad and the good that coexists, and of course the bad being you know, owing to macroeconomic factors, um, a, a quick read of how the numbers stack up for Zoho is quite interesting. Manage Engine, which of course accounts for half of your revenues, registered growth of uh, I think 25% in FY21, slow to 18% the next fiscal, um, and the company says that it could continue growth over the next two, three years. In fact, going on to register a billion dollars of revenue yes. on its own itself. Right. So while these forecasts are looking rosy and are positive, does that automatically mean better growth prospects for Zoho, despite all of these challenges that we speak about? If, you know, as I said, there are these, subject to these significant uncertainties which nobody can forecast, mm -hmm. we are still growing and we are poised to grow. Mm -hmm. But what I cannot predict is what will happen three months, six months down the road. Right. As I said, the global economy is a massive earthquake zone. Mm -hmm. And even the bailouts that happened, mm -hmm. it all felt so ad hoc, mm -hmm. so like they're reacting. Mm -hmm. And what if there is a crisis, they cannot really react this way quickly. Mm -hmm. Those are the worries. And, and I have long been a critic of central banking policies, particularly in the West. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is not a surprise that all these things happened. Mm -hmm. I didn't predict that SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, would be the one that hit the skids. But it's obvious that the financial system had a lot of such mm -hmm. like mines, minefields. It's a minefield. Mm -hmm. And so it is difficult to predict mm -hmm. all those. And what, how policymakers will react, what will happen to the US dollar, none of those are in our control. Mm -hmm. But barring all those, we have really good products and services. We are very competitive in terms of the full functionality, the integration, the value that we add, all of this. So if businesses are buying software at all, mm -hmm. we believe we have a good chance of winning that. Their, their custom. Mm -hmm. But the question is how many people will be buying in six Absolutely. months? That is the question. And not just how many how many people, because I think when we last spoke, you also said that the ticket price per business was also reducing. Do you see some positivity on that front or does it continue to stay? We, we actually are seeing greater than ever number of customers, okay. but also the ticket size has come down. Right. So how, how, what's the increase in customers vis-a-vis -vis the fall in ticket size? So we, we would have seen a surge of like 20-30% in terms of customer count. Okay compared to say a year, year and a half ago, mm -hmm. which is very good. Mm -hmm. But revenue itself was only growing like uh, 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 less than that. In other words, we are not growing at 20, 25%, mm -hmm. even though customer count is growing 20, right. 25%. Right. And the reason is that fall in ticket size. Mm -hmm. it, it is one way at a good sign because smaller customers yes. and more uh, uh, you know, uh, budget constrained customers are coming to us. Mm -hmm. And in these times, being seen as a value player and a company that delivers a lot of value is a good thing. So I'm not, you know, I'm not complaining about the surge in customer count. Mm -hmm. I also believe that these customers, longer term, as they grow, they will grow with us. Right. So in a way, that, that also it's a foundation for future growth right. as well, having lots of customers. Mm -hmm. But you are seeing that reduction in ticket size. It is stabilizing. It's not further declining. Mm -hmm. But it is definitely that, that trend is very observable in our data. And the revenue growth for the fiscal gone by would have been a ballpark figure of We what? would have grown close to 20%, but I don't expect the next year, I'm not forecasting it, mm -hmm. I don't expect 20%. I'd be surprised if I get 20%. So. Right, right. Uh, but then I also have to ask you before we end, the last time we spoke, you said you were doubling investments in AI and machine learning. Yeah. Critical, critical sectors, yeah. no doubt. Uh, does that commitment stand good, given the fact that you've also managed to retain your employees? It is a downturn that you are facing, but are you continued to commit to those in investments? Yes, yes, we have, we have, we have actually, we are increasing our AI investment. Uh, moving more people into that, and also the hardware resources. AI 
is uh, expensive, not just in terms of people. Mm -hmm. You also need this GPU compute, all of that. Right. So we are acquiring all that capacity, all of that too. So. All right. Well, you heard it from the man himself. The future is all about artificial intelligence. And what's more, it could take form and shape in the villages of India as opposed to the big city. Sridhar Bembo, on that note, great to have you with us here on CNBC TV Eaton Weekender. Thank you so much. For Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Andri.